Welcome back, everyone. It's been a while, but today I'm back to talk about uranium. So why why has it been so long since I've really talked about uranium? Well, mostly in the intermediate term, there hasn't really been too much new to say. There's been some move in the equities, and after that, the market has been rather flat for a while. And so in addition to not having much new to say, the sentiment and the story and the thing to watch has been waiting on Sprott. And so for a while, I voiced, you know, I mentioned what my thinking was on what Sprott could mean and what would it be needed to watch from that. But really, it was that, then wait and see how it goes, which takes us to approximately now. So recently, the story of the market, the story, has been Sprott, and finally they got their ATM. Now, there has been some bulk buying recently when you know there's been a raise and then the associated delays, but with the ATM, finally, can the market bridge uh, the gap, can it become an efficient, more efficient market? Can the price move? And that's been the story. And so far, the ATM has been very effective. It has been, it has bought a few hundred pounds, a uh, few hundred thousand pounds per day, and uh, which has been done very quickly and far more aggressively and efficiently than what I honestly expected. I have watched this market in the past and seen all of the ways that would be more difficult for things to happen. But um, for the time being, it has been more aggressive, more efficient than what I expected. And even though the, the premium has narrowed very quickly um, and the liquidity so far has been higher than what I remember, at least while the ATM has been active, um, even though there's been a very slight premium and even though all of what I said, they have still kept collecting the money and kept moving it into the spot market. So as long as this keeps going, they are doing exactly what they said they would do and what people were hoping. And with all that said, they are arbitraging this and they're walking a very narrow line at times because the way that they add value, add assets under man management is by selling shares and arbitrage, arbitraging, having a premium to NAV in the share price and transforming that into more NAV. Now, the problem we kind of could have expected and are seeing to a degree is that the spread in the spot market is compared to other markets huge it's like a 75 percent 70 sorry 75 cent spread most of the time which is still above two percent which is very large for spreads which means you need more of a premium which means it's harder to get it and also the other thing we've started to see, and again, very predictable, is when it looks like they're raising money, the price moves away from them. And that starts by widening the spread, which makes it harder for them to uh, act. But so far, they have effectively been raising and the market's been giving them enough of a premium for them to just keep getting, picking up the money and putting in the spot market. Now, we'll have to watch over the medium to longer term how this would act um, when the market's not really giving them that much of a premium um, because then they're at risk of burning themselves um, while trying to do it. But so far, it has been more effective and more straightforward than I would have thought. And it's also been very quick, which is, again, surprising when it comes to something with this type of uh, disjointed uh, large spread in a market. A while ago, there was a little bit of talk about redemptions, and I just wanted to weigh in. So a redemption would be 
when they essentially do the reverse of an ATM, uh, sell the pounds and buy back the shares. Now, they certainly don't want to be selling uranium in the market. And but I think that the likely scenario is at some point they probably will, despite whatever the plan is um, from management at this point. But they won't be doing this if they're trading at a premium, which they are and which they hope to continue. But I'm reminded of the Mike Tyson quote, everyone has a plan until they get punched in the mouth. Meaning, well, what happens if they're trading at a 25% discount and the shareholders are screaming at them to pick up the free money by selling the uranium? I think at that point they would do it. Now, is this relevant today? No. Could it not be relevant for the next five years? Possibly. But I'm just saying, assuming that under no circumstances there would be redemptions is not something I'm willing to do. And plus we've seen their competitor um, show that they are willing to pick up free money when it's given to them. And in this type of industry, cost of capital could be incredibly important um, in various ways that I don't really want to get into now. But suffice it to say, I don't think that under no circumstances would they be selling uranium to buy back shares. Um, but again, you know, if it goes, if there's an ATM, it could easily be the opposite. Both sides could add value. So, so far, I wanted to go through what has been shown. And so far, what we've seen is that they are willing to be aggressive when the demand is there. If they're trading at a premium and if there's a lot of volume trading, they will keep buying and they will be as aggressive as they can be. They've also shown that the actual spot market is either thin or willing to move higher when it seems like there might be demand. So for example, might not be thin, but it might be not willing to sell at the current price or whoever um, has the uranium might be only selling it uh, or might be lifting their expectations when they see there's a buyer coming in. So that is also potentially possible. To keep going for the, the upticks that we've seen in the last few weeks, for them to keep going, there needs to be a continuous stream of buyers. And kind of in the opposite to those three points, one thing we haven't seen yet is how the market, how the spot market would react if, for example, um, uh, the Sprott physical trust um, traded at a 5% discount. Would it fall down with, with Sprott? Would it stay flat and then the stop buying? So we also don't know if it would track it back down because our limited experience has been um, basically slight premium or decent premium. So we, we don't really know what other market environments will look like. We also haven't really seen a bit of a, you know, drop in the, in the broader market that has kind of impacted commodities in, in a way beyond the initial um, excitement around uh, the, the Sprott ATM. So another thing I wanted to add in kind of a similar, something to keep an eye on vein is I used to have a tracker for the participation corp that was very close to the daily nav. I don't anymore because it changes very slightly on a very, on a day to day basis. So why is this, why does this matter? Well, Daily Sprott does record th report their nav, but it's not entirely clear um, where they price the uranium. And I say that because, like I said before, there's a spread one and a half to two percent between the bid and the ask. So, and even then, once it looks like they're going to buy, the price might move on them. So, watching where they're raising relative to 
uh, the NAV and relative to like what type of premium? Are they raising at half a percent premium? If so, they might actually in the end be losing money over time versus not. So we have to watch the spread, um, the NAV on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, so far, this hasn't been much of an issue because uh, Sprott has basically been blasted with money um, day after day over and over, but that is unlikely to continue forever. So we still have a, a variety of market environments to witness. And, you know, once the novelty of the situation, once this is not like, uh, oh my God, this is new, uh, first time we could just throw money into the market physically, once that wears off, and once it's kind of matured, um, it, it's unclear how the market will react in different ways. There's a few ideas, but really it's purely speculative at this point. Quick point on seasonality, not Sprout related, but um, generally we have about another month or so of not great seasonality before the seasonality really kicks in and is bullish. Um, but this year has been slightly different in terms of the, the month and a half or two months leading up to the, well, the time that's normally weak seasonality has not been weak, probably because of, uh, Sprott, but it's just something to watch before, um, potentially the, the actual buyers who may reasonably have moved up their timetable, um, seeing as Sprott and not wanting to wait till after that. So they may have been moving up their timetable also. Unclear, normally they'd be stepping in later, but it, it, could, cha it could change based on market dynamics. Another thing on the Xatomprom front, your quarterly reminder of that them saying their inventory is lower than they like. It's mostly as expected, but um, as they also did reduce their forward production guidance, um, which was ahead of schedule, but not unplanned. Um, you know, it's more of the similar messaging to what we would have expected, um, just based on looking at the market in the past few years. One interesting point that I saw is that fund flows were decidedly negative for a while. And Honestly, this was one of my concerns um, in terms of different correlations and just general uh, fund flow. It was one of my concerns recently. But in the past few days, we've had a bit of an uptick in, in fund flow, at least as measured by the Uranium uh, URA ETF, which is more of a generalist side ETF in Uranium. So there was a bit of a, an uptick um, in terms of fund flow. I don't know if this reverses the, the bit of a multi-month negative trend that we've seen. Could just be a one or two day thing. Unclear, but it's just another thing that's interesting and potentially something to watch. Now, just having a bit of an honest conversation about spot for a second, the spot market and the price. Frankly, I'm a bit surprised that it hasn't moved yet. By virtually all reasonable calculations, it seems to me like it should have, and it probably should have a while ago. If you were to rewind a few years ago, take back, go back two years and describe to me fundamentally what has happened um, over two years and ask me to guess what the price would be. I'd have probably given a significantly higher number than what we're seeing. So what does that mean? Well, on one hand, every indication is that we're close, but I could equally say that every indication is that we should have already moved and we haven't. Take that for whatever you wish. I do want to address this point very quickly on spot market versus equities. For a while, it seemed like the equities were waiting for the spot market because 
and and people were getting fed up with equities. But I think if we take a more holistic view and we look at the past year and a half, I think it's pretty clear that there are different drivers between spot market and the equities. The equities aren't purely leveraged to what goes on directly in the spot market. This is fairly evident by looking at the price action in the spot market and the price action in the equities. So what I will say is don't expect because we've seen this divergence, because they've proven that they're looking for different things, don't expect an exact correlation and, and don't expect that it will act purely as a levered play on the spot market. It's theoretically possible what I'm saying, the style of thing that I'm saying is that it's possible that spot market goes to $50 and the equities don't really react. I'm not suggesting that'll happen. I think that if it moved, if the spot market moved to $50, $60, I think the equities would be higher. But I'm saying don't expect a one-to-one -one correlation or even a two-to-one correlation because it's levered. Different drivers, different sentiment impacts, different, all sorts of different um, rules. And that's what I wanted to point out. So as always, this is not investment advice, but in wrapping up, there was a few things I will say. I honestly don't know if this is the time to be adding um, to uranium holdings broadly. If the Sprott Physical Uranium Trust buying keeps at the current pace, then it probably will be. But for a number of reasons, I don't believe the current pace is sustainable, um, whether that's because the price gets uh, moved higher because there's not enough supply or because the money wanting in diminishes. Not sure which one it will be. I have recently only added to the physical, um, to my holdings in the physical uranium via the trust, obviously, um, as I believe that it is the most appealing risk reward at today's um, market environment at today's levels so that I have been buying and it's the only uranium related thing that I have been adding to. So obviously non-investment advice, obviously I'm not suggesting anyone else do that. Um, that's just kind of what I've done recently. And with that, with all of that, I hope you found something in this video interesting. Um, and until next time, wish you all the best and have a great day.